The three parables of today teach us the following three important things about the kingdom. Number one, the kingdom of God depends on grace. When you listen to the first parable, it describes the kingdom of God like a farmer who went out to get the treasure and by chance or grace he was able to find one. <laughs> Number two, the kingdom of God also depends on human efforts. The next parable or the second describes the kingdom like a merchant who embarked on a deliberate search for that which is important and he got that which is important the last the kingdom of God depends on God's justice in the last parable we see how the fishermen use their dragnet to bring out different kind of fish and when they get to the shore, they have to bring out the good one and take off the bad one. The kingdom of God is all about justice. Now, this morning, I would like us to reflect on the theme, the church, the church of Christ, the symbol of the fisherman's Dragnets. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Church of Christ, the symbol of the fisherman's dragnets. Some years ago, when the movie Angels and Demons, some of you you watch that movie. When the movie came out, the Church of God received a lot of criticism both left and right, center, back, front. The criticism, we are just coming. Now, both constructive and deconstructive criticism. Among the deconstructive ones, you hear things like, so there are also priests, bishops, cardinals, who have evil agenda who have evil intention those are some of the things we are hearing when that movie came out and also to over the years we have come to hear statement like this particular pope is an antichrist this particular one has come to actualize an evil agenda you are Christians you are aware of this reality because it is just there blowing in the wind and you get it, you catch it. Now, my brothers and sisters, there is no institution in this world that has received more criticism than the Church of Christ. And there is no institution in this world that has received more persecution than the church of Christ. And even in the midst of the pandemic also, we heard the church this, the church that, the church this. It has become a rhyme for so many persons. When I am talking about the church of Christ, I am not talking about different churches. I am talking about the church that was founded by Jesus Christ himself. I am talking about the church that Jesus found that is holy, that is one, that is apostolic, and that is Catholic. Now, the church of Christ itself, or the church of Christ, as it is. What is the church of Christ? What does it entail? 
The church is a place of healing. The church is a place of comfort. The church is a place of teaching the truth. The church is the dispenser of wisdom to our children. The church is the place where the ideals is being practiced. The church is also the place where equality of both the rich and the poor is being fully practicalized. The church is the one that forms the consciences of our children. The church is the place where morals and faith we teach it in the church and we encourage the faithful to practice this. The church is a place of peace and the church is a place where you find different caliber of people. The church is a mother and a teacher. And the Latin word we say, mater et magister, a mother and a teacher. The church as the dragnet of the fisherman houses different kind of people. Let me take it again. The church as the dragnet of the fisherman houses different kind of people. It houses the poor, it houses the rich, black, white, people you find in the church. You find the, the politicians in the church. The sailors, they are here. The presidents, yes, pastors, priests, bishop, prophets, prostitutes, ritualists, Senators, policemen, soldiers, the good, the bad, and the ugly, saints and sinners, angels and demons. These are the caliber of people that you find in the church. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the question that we should ask is this. The church that Christ founded is a church that has the characteristics and that carries out the functions that I just listed. Now, the question is this. The church that is the symbol of God's kingdom on earth has never stopped dispensing wisdom to the children of God. If you come to the church and you do not get wise, it is not the fault of the preacher. Neither is it the fault of the church. Because the church that Christ founded is a church that is holistic. Now where is the fault coming from? Because at the end of the day, each time we the children in the church, each time we don't represent the church well. The easy way they point fingers to us is, and look at him, or look at her. And she said, or he, say, or he says, he's a Christian. Or he's a Christian. That is the easy way the attack usually comes. And, and, and he's claiming he's a Christian. He's a vice president. He's a pastor. A Christian. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Now, if we, that are supposed to be the ambassadors of the church, if we do not do our work very well, is it now that the church is bad? No. The church is not bad. 
the church that Jesus founded is a church that is filled with ideals and that preaches wisdom. The wisdom of Solomon, we can also get it. But the problem is, how do we prioritize our prayers? What is our intention when we pray? I'm coming to that later, later. If a child refuses to learn the ideas that the parent is trying to put into him or her, if such a child goes out to disgrace the family, are you going to blame the parent that the parent did not do their job well? I'm asking. Are you going to blame the parent? You are not going to blame the parent. For instance, you are always talking to your child. This thing you are doing is not good. This thing you are doing is not good. Change, 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 change. And if your child refuses to change, is it your fault? Is it your fault? Answer, is it your fault? Good. The same thing is applicable to the church. We have seen recently how Christian politicians how they have not represented the church well. How they have not do what they are supposed to do as Christian politicians. Because at the end of the day, we must know these facts. When they get there, we usually tell ourselves they are not for us any longer. But they will always be for you because many of these persons, they are workers in the house of the Lord. So we are other servers. Some, their parents or their fathers, we are even cat kids. Funny enough. Now, if they go out there, they don't represent well. Is it that the church has not formed their conscience as well? No. The church has done its part. And that brings us back to the dragnet, the parable of the dragnet. In the church, you find both saints and what? Sinners. The good, the bad, and what? Angels and what? Demons. I know that will sound somehow, but that's it. We have seen recently our Christian politicians that are supposed to be filled with wisdom. How they have continued to disgrace the office that they are holding. You saw it yourself now. The acting MD and the drama. The fainting things. Which is now the order of the words. The day. If you have been put in charge of a particular office, for you to come and give account of what you have been put in place, if you cannot give account, the escape route now is to do what? Amen, amen and amen. amen. And somebody also made a joke of this because he's not the first person that is painting. We have people like Christian politicians like Metu and other politicians like that who have painted. I was listening to a talk show on the radio some days back and I heard one of the presenters talking about those who have fainted trying to present account of their stewardship and there is this particular one that actually got, got me laughing the one of Eye of Eye of Shea, hey, Kitty, right? Who fainted? He fainted, right? Did he faint? What happened to him? He was putting something in the neck, right? And the presenter said, I or she said he needed medical leave treatments. 
And when he was granted that, they found him somewhere cruising in the beach, enjoying himself. It doesn't end there. And we have also seen Christian politicians, instead of them giving account of their stewardship, you hear them attacking themselves. And you hear things like, if you yab me, I will yab you ten times. Praise the Lord. If you yab me, I will do what? Yab you ten times. Look at you. I am a VI boy and you are a what? A mushy boy. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, is that what we want to hear? These are Christian politicians. And at the end of the day, it will always fall back to us, the Christians. Look at them. They are Christian. This guy is a Christian. And the one that happened recently is the one that people are now sending COVID-19 on people now. Yes. Dino you know Melaya was sending COVID-19 to those who will come and rig the election in those states. Where did we learn all these things? And if you are asked, these are church men. They will always attend church somewhere. They always have, they have their parishes. And they have where they go to worship. It still goes back, goes back to the parable of the dragnet. In the church, Don't expect to see saints. But one thing is certain. We are always going to do the sorting out in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are always going to do the sorting out because we know and we see and we can tell for ourselves. We know those who are really doing what they are supposed to do. And we know those who are not doing or they are not, we know those who are not doing what they are expected to do. And that is the sorting that we are talking about. The sorting out we start first in the church on earth. When we finish sorting out, then the remaining sorting out we leave it for who? God. So what is the message of today? The message of today is the wisdom that we learn from the church. The truth that we instill in us in the church. When we go out there, let us be good ambassadors. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us be good ambassadors. That is what is necessary. Let us be good ambassadors. So that when the time for sorting out comes, we will be dragged into the kingdom of God. It is very, very important. What is our value in life? What do we attach so much interest that we deny us of the kingdom of God? If after all the suffering in this world, at the end of the day, we cannot make heaven, then our life on earth is just wasted. So we pray today that God will give us that wisdom like the one he gave to Solomon so that we can choose wisely. In the pattern of our prayers, let us learn to pray well because some of us, we don't even know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. You have just been given an appointment to head a particular department in your organization. What do you need first and foremost? Is it not to go in the quietness of the blessed sacrament in the chapel and tell God to lead you, to protect you, to give you the wisdom 
that is necessary to discharge your duty properly. But sometimes we are not interested in that. All we are just interested in is, since I have been given this position, it is now time for me to match all my enemies. It is now time for me to wound that person that was not greeting me. Don't forget as you are wounding people, it is just a matter of time. You will do what? You will come back. So let us pray for wisdom. Wisdom is very, very important. May the Lord bless His words in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen.